Relief, a program funded by the federal government run by the state of Michigan and MISHTA. 19,000 Detroit families have been helped to stay in their homes during the COVID lockdown. Uh, and the SARA program was always intended by the federal government to be a short-term program to keep people from being evicted when they were locked in their homes and couldn't go to work. You couldn't make any money if you couldn't go to work, uh, and we would have had a tragedy in this country uh, if everybody who was prevented from going to work uh, ended up being evicted. Uh, we knew it was a short-term program, uh, and it did what it was intended to do. It gave folks interim rent and utility assistance while they were in lockdown. But today, people are by and large back to work, uh, and June 30th, new applications are going to come to an end. So the state and the feds have let us know that new applications are going to come to an end. And uh, I just want to thank everybody who has been a part of this. We have put $159 million in assistance to renters and landlords uh, in uh, really a year and a half uh, and kept 19,000 families in their homes. So for everybody who helped us, the United Community Housing Coalition, United Way for Southeast Michigan, Wayne Metro Community Action Agency, and the, the members of the media uh, who have uh, promoted this, it's been a great program. I want to make clear what this June 30th deadline is. This means they aren't going to take any more applications. If you're already in the queue, you're all right. Your application is being processed. We've probably got another 10,000 plus families who are in uh, the review process now. Those will continue. What happens June 30th is they will not take new applicants. And so uh, we are starting to get questions from folks that says, okay, what's going to happen to me if I get evicted in July or August or September? If this program's gone, who's going to be there for me? And so today, we want to let uh, the residents of the city who may be insecure in their current housing situation know that the city of Detroit is going to step in and we are going to be ready July 1st with long-term assistance programs. Uh, and we've got a three-part immediate intervention plan. Anybody who's being evicted and is in the verge of being homeless, uh, the city is going to be ready to step in immediately so you don't spend a single night uh, on the street. So after July 1st, we will be continuing to offer help in three ways. We're going to offer legal assistance at Landlord Tenant Court, 36th District Court. If you're facing eviction uh, and you show up for court, we will have a lawyer there for you. If you're being treated unfairly, uh, you'll have a lawyer. Now, the, the help paying back rent is gone, but this will protect you against a landlord who is not uh, acting legally appropriately in trying to remove you. And probably 90, 95% of the cases without this program, uh, tenants would have gone in against the landlord's attorney and not have been on equal footing. Now, uh, you will be. Second, if you come home and find your, uh, that you've been locked out, you are homeless, uh, we are going to provide immediate help, as we do today, so that you will be housed that night. Uh, and um, this is the one that I probably get the most phone calls about. I've been renting my house or my apartment for years. The rent just went up $100 a month. Property values are going up in the city. I'm getting concerned I'm starting to fall behind. Uh, and uh, what we have done now through Detroit at Work is put in a rapid job placement program. So if you feel like uh, you're falling behind financially, uh, they, Detroit at Work will put you in a situation where you can raise your income, stay where you are, uh, and be able to get that kind of assistance. So we're going to talk you through the three options that will be available uh, post July 1st. Uh, and uh, probably nothing has been as dramatic as our free uh, legal representation program. We set this up uh, in March of last year. Actually, we started even earlier than that in August. So it's been about a year and a half. Uh, and between UCHC, Michigan Legal Services, Lakeshore Legal Aid, and a whole variety of private lawyers, we've provided legal aid to 16,000 Detroiters facing eviction. This is the first time in this city that if you went into court facing eviction, uh, the city provided a lawyer for you. And we did it with an interesting approach. It's called the House Counsel Program. And so what we do is have an attorney in the courtroom. So every case that's called, if 
a tenant shows up and says, I don't know about my rights, I don't know about this, you immediately have the lawyer provided by the city who will be there to give you help. And we found this to be the most efficient way. We are going to continue that program past July 1st and into the fall. At some point, uh, the right to counsel ordinance the city council passed, the help from the Gilbert Foundation, those things will kick in at some point this fall. But I want to make sure everybody knows that July 1st, the lawyers are going to continue to be there in the courtroom. Uh, and uh, at this point, uh, I want to bring up Ashley Lowe, who has done a phenomenal job at Lakeshore Legal. Um, you think about 16,000 people facing evicted, eviction who came in and got help and are continuing to get help. And with that, uh, I'd like Ashley to talk about the program and how it's going. Michigan. In the city of Detroit, we are so proud to be part of this team of United Community Housing Coalition, Michigan Legal Services, uh, that are providing advice and representation to tenants who are facing eviction in the 36th District Court. Um, uh, every single day between these three organizations, our lawyers are in court on these virtual dockets uh, representing tenants. So every time someone goes to court, there is a legal aid lawyer there to represent them. So let me talk a little bit about those dockets and what they, they look like. Um, when a tenant is, is served with notice that they are being evicted, they get an invitation to a Zoom hearing. And so the hearings are virtual, they're not in person. And if somebody is unable to appear by Zoom, say they don't have the video technology, that's fine. You can still call into the Zoom hearing and get assistance that way. And when you appear at that Zoom hearing, then the first thing the judge says is to the tenant, do you wanna meet with a lawyer? And if the answer is yes, then the judge moves that tenant into a waiting room that's a private room with that lawyer, and they have a private conversation. So nobody else can hear what's being said. Uh, the tenant can tell the lawyer what's happening. The lawyer will assess that, and then the lawyer will give advice to the tenant about how to move forward. Right now, of course, we're giving people the advice that they need to file for uh, emergency rental assistance because that deadline is fast approaching. Um, and, uh, but always, whether that is in place or is not, um, the most important thing to remember is for tenants that they come to court if they are served with an eviction notice. Um, even if you've already applied for SARA, even if you have already received some other assistance, lawyers can do great work, but they can't do anything if the tenant is not there in person. Um, and we do know that lawyers make a huge difference um, in the Michigan eviction diversion program in 2020, 97% of tenants who were represented by a lawyer were able to remain in their homes. And those, those numbers are pretty consistent with, with national numbers too, because lawyers help tenants understand their rights and enforce their rights. So talking to them about their right to, uh, rights relating to um, vouchers or subsidized housing, the rights to get uh, repairs made, and the right to not be penalized if you ask for repairs to get made or an inspection to be done. Um, and so it's important to know that the lawyers are continue to be there every day, ready to help tenants stay in their home. Thank you. Uh, in many cities in this country, uh, you will see all kinds of tent encampments with homeless folks living out for periods of time, people living on sidewalks or in storefronts. In the city of Detroit, we are committed that nobody is living on the streets involuntarily. There are some individuals uh, who choose to be uh, uh, outside, uh, but we have the capacity to respond on an emergency basis. And we, we've done a pretty good job of getting this out there. We want to make sure that with uh, the lack of back rent assistance, people know that if you find yourself in a situation where you, you and your family, uh, are out and don't know where you're going to stay tonight, uh, we do have a, pro a program through the HAND network uh, called CAM Detroit. Uh, and they will respond immediately. They will get you a place to stay that night. And so you can go in person over to 1600 Porter. The telephone number is there, 313-305-0311. Nearly every social service agency, nearly every hospital uh, in this city knows uh, that that's 
uh, the service that you can reach. But again, I'm going to continue to ask for the media to help. Last uh, summer, I happened to be driving uh, in the middle of the afternoon in a park uh, along the Jefferson Chalmers area, and a fellow was in a car in the park, and he saw me, beeped his horn. I stopped to talk to him. He had his wife and two children uh, in the back seat, uh, and he was happy to see me. But then he said, we lost our home. We're going to sleep in our car tonight. Uh, and I was able, sitting right there, to connect him to this group, and they had him placed that evening. But it bothered me uh, that we had people, you know, a, a family planning to spend the night in the car, did not know that the CAM uh, Detroit resource uh, is there. So there is no reason for somebody to stay out involuntarily. You might be at a shelter, you might be in a temporary hotel, uh, but this is immediate intervention, uh, and we are going... Uh, to be there, and they will place you that night and then uh, uh, put you with a specialist who figures out what's the best decision uh, for you. So I, I don't want anybody to be on the street wondering, what am I going to do tonight? The city of Detroit is going to be there for you uh, to get you a place to stay. Then the third issue uh, is one I talked about before, and it's one we're hearing all the time. My rents are going up. I'm afraid I'm going to have to move. I'm afraid I'm going to get evicted. Uh, what do I do? Uh, there have been many times in this city when there really wasn't a choice. There weren't any jobs available. The city of Detroit today, we've got more than 12,000 uh, vacant uh, positions. We've got uh, a lot of jobs that we can get you placed in immediately. We can get you an additional part-time job if you need to do that. Uh, and with that, let me turn it over to the director of Detroit at Work, uh, who will make sure that anybody who calls and says, I'm concerned about making my rent payments, uh, she will get you placed uh, into our rapid job placement program. Uh, so the Detroit Work Director, Dana Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So as you said, Detroit at Work is the city's workforce agency, and we have been supporting residents in their job search on a regular basis for a long time. Through the Rapid Jobs Program, we're simply providing that service in a more responsive and intensive way. Um, so please contact us now. Uh, don't wait. Uh, if you feel that you're on the verge of not having enough income, we can work with you to get you connected to an opportunity that may even be part time, as the mayor said, until you figure out what your next move is. Uh, right now, the people that we've placed are actually earning already over $16 an hour. And I actually just yesterday heard the story of a young man that was connected to us through this program. He was thrilled. We helped him with his resume within a few days, got him connected to a job, and he's now making over $20 an hour, um, and he can stay where he is. So please contact Detroit at Work through DetroitEvictionHelp.com or just call us and say you're interested in a rapid job 313-962-WORK 313-962-WORK or that's 9675 thank you so you don't have a lot of places in the country where the different programs work together but when uh, uh, Ashley and Michigan Legal Services and uh, UCHC started talking to tenants about their problems. Uh, you could have a complaint about a landlord, you could have a complaint about a leaky roof, you could have a number of complaints, but I said, what is one thing I could do to help you uh, represent uh, these individuals? And what they said was, in many cases, we got folks who need to make more money. And we really brainstormed together and said, what happens when you have a client uh, who, even if you can get this forgiveness, is going to be behind next month's rent and next month's rent. Could you put us in uh, a rapid job placement and, and have uh, that resident be secure in their homes? And so, as Dana just told you, uh, the program is very successful for the people who choose it, and we're going to keep doing it. Today, we're talking uh, about what we're going to do post-July 1st, but I want to make sure uh, that everybody understands uh, what is available for the next two weeks until the applications uh, for the SARA program end and if you are already in the queue because you've applied, uh, how does that work? And so let me introduce the expert on the SARA program, our housing director, Julie Schneider. Good afternoon. 
This is critical assistance that we've had available since spring of 2021, and we want to make sure everyone who's eligible for it takes advantage of it and receives the assistance that you need. Um, so on May 30th, the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, or MISHTA, sent out emails to anyone who had applied. So if you have previously applied for Sarah Rental Assistance, you've called the 866-313-2520 number, or you've filled out an application on the Detroit Eviction Help Portal, um, check your email. That email will tell you, give you information about the status of your application. If your application has been received but not processed, you would have received a Sarah ID in that email. It's a, um, a, a numerical code that helps you be able to check the status of your inf of your um, of your application on the Detroit Eviction Help website. You can go through the portal and use that Sarah ID to check the status of your application. If you received an email that says uh, your application was not completed, we need you to take further action to make sure that you receive the assistance that you are requesting. Um, if you receive that email that says that you had to take further action, you must complete filling it out by June 30th, 9 p.m. specifically Eastern Time on June 30th to get your application um, completed and considered for processing. Um, so again, check your email. You're looking for MSHDA, M-S-H-D-A, Michigan State Housing Development Authority rental assistance. If you see those things in your email, that's the email that you're looking for. And again, they began sending it the week of May 30th. Um, so if you haven't applied for Sarah assistance and you are behind on your rent, you've, you've had a COVID hardship that has led to you having difficulty paying your rent, we encourage you to, uh, to apply. Um, those of you who haven't applied yet, again, the deadline is 9 p.m. on Thursday, June, th June 30th um, in just a couple weeks, but that is the time the application portal closes, and so we want to make sure that you, you take advantage of that. Um, if you have already completed your application, I encourage you to check the status of your application, but not to apply again. When you apply again, it will slow down the overall processing time of even your application if you've previously applied. It might be in the queue. So status of your application, if you uh, see that you need to complete your application, please do so uh, immediately, and otherwise um, you'll see where you are in the process and in the queue for being processed. Um, Applications that are, have been submitted in the portal will continue to be reviewed and processed. So if you receive a status that is in process, know that we are still processing it and we will uh, continue to do so until all funds are spent. Um, and we anticipate uh, that happening towards the, the end of this year. Um, if you have not yet applied, um, I encourage you to go to DetroitEvictionHelp.com or call 866 313-2520. If you can't apply online, the Sarah Helpline, the 866-313-2520 uh, number, will uh, help you uh, get that application process and schedule a navigation appointment for you. So please take advantage of this assistance. We want to make sure that everybody can stay in their home, um, and this, this resource will help you to be able to do that. Thank you. Okay, and one last time, I, I want to thank the media. This stuff sounds confusing. The fact that we're able to help 19,000 families and, and put $150 million in assistance to tenants and landlords, it was because uh, the media found a way to make this understandable. And hopefully as we transition from the federal rent assistance program uh, to the city's uh, legal help, of uh, homelessness uh, help, and rapid hiring help, uh, we'll continue to have that same kind of cooperation. With that, I'll take any questions. John, we got anything? All right. Thank you all very much.